It is the week of April 12th, 2020, after Easter. My name is Marie, and this is my first garden tour. Please do share any recommendations you have about my garden or these videos, or leave any questions you may have in the comments. Just to give you some background, I moved into this place about three years ago, and it is a rented space. It's pretty small, measuring roughly 25 by 25 feet, and half of it is in shade. This half on the right side that you're seeing now is almost completely shaded. The other side gets pretty good sun for most of the year, but that is a pretty big challenge if you want to grow enough food. When I moved in here, the garden was pretty overgrown and disorganized, but it was lush and beautiful in its own way. I have moved and removed a lot of things to try and optimize sun exposure. My goal is to make this a productive vegetable garden on the sunny side and to reserve the shade side for native wildlife and to attract pollinators. I have taken many suggestions from other gardeners on YouTube and will link to their channels in the description when those come up. Spring is well underway and I've done a lot, but there's still so much to do. So I'll show you where I am now, starting with the seedlings in the greenhouse over there. So this greenhouse is really just a metal shelf with a fitted plastic cover. It is a really good size for this spot because I don't have a lot of room to spare for a greenhouse, but it doesn't breathe well, so much of the time I have to leave the zipper front open so that the plants don't scorch. I am attempting a large variety of vegetables and flowers. That noisy bird you just heard is a scrub jay, one of the local varieties. And many of these vegetables and flowers that I'm growing will just be given away because I don't actually have the space to plant them all. It's more just an experiment to gain some experience in starting my own seedlings. This has been the most challenging aspect of gardening for me, particularly with regard to regulating moisture. I'm having a really poor time with germination. Seedlings are withering or scorching. Growth is really slow and ultimately I will probably end up buying a lot of plants because I'm only about a month away from planting now and I don't think most of these are going to be ready to go into their spots in the garden. I will do a separate video all about my seed starting techniques with details about the methods and what I'm trying to grow. Next I want to talk about the structures in this garden. The main structures would be the patio, the raised beds, the stackable planters in the corner on the far side, and the compost bin. These raised beds I built with some rough cut cedar that I got at a local lumber place, and they've been really great. I found this design from Growing Your Greens, which is a YouTube channel that I'll link in the description. For pest control, he actually recommended putting wire mesh on the bottoms of these planters. Underneath each planter is half inch wire mesh stapled on and that keeps moles out, which is a problem we have here. The first year I tried growing here, moles were a real issue and they would get up into the young plants and tip them over and just kind of wreak havoc. So these have been really successful in keeping them out and keeping my plants safe and healthy. These hoops that I installed here I got this idea from Gardener Scott, another YouTuber. He has a great tutorial on the different kinds of hoops you can build to provide protection for your plants. Over these, I will probably just put a large bug netting, which allows in things like ladybugs, but keeps out things like cabbage moths, which in the past have wreaked havoc on my plants as well. This is a compost bin I made out of recycled pallets following a design that was shown on the Grow Veg channel, and I'll provide a link to that in the description. It's basically just compost bins stuck together. I've lined it with some landscaping fabric and put some of that half-inch wire mesh around the edge just to kind of keep everything contained. All I have in there right now is greens and browns from weeding and pulling out old plants. I don't put any food waste in this open bin until it has broken down some because we have an issue with rats. We put all of our kitchen waste in this large garbage can, which has become kind of an, an unintentional wormery. Some red wrigglers have gone in there, and once that's broken down, generally by the time it's full, the compost is broken down enough that I can mix it into the main bin without it attracting too much riffraff. 
these stackable planters I designed and built myself just based on some pictures I saw of vertical planter ideas on Google and I'm really proud of these. I acquired some basic carpentry skills from an organization called Talent Maker City. I took an intro to carpentry class for women with them and it was actually really world expanding in the way that it taught me to use tools I had never used before, how to design plans for things like this, and just generally how to operate with safety when using things that could potentially cut off your fingers. So I'm really proud of these and looking forward to growing stuff in them. They are made of fence boards that I got again at my same local lumber yard. They are lined with landscaping fabric and underneath they are lined just like the large raised beds with that half inch wire mesh. Folks have expressed moisture concerns with having these leaned up against the house. They're not actually leaned. There is quite a bit of room I can fit my hand behind each of these. So it's not right up against the siding. This is also a south facing wall and it gets very hot and very dry. And in fact, I generally have a hard time keeping things adequately watered. Just to give you an idea, I watered this oregano this morning and you can see that dirt is already quite loose and dry just from one day sitting out here in mid-April. Imagine how it gets in mid-July. If dryness continues to be an issue and plants are wilting, I may have to disassemble these stacks and add planks on the bottom of the boxes just to help them retain moisture a little bit better, but we'll see how it goes. And now for the fun part, the plants. I will provide a link in the description of my garden layout, which includes all of the plants. And when I'm going around and showing you things, I will try to say both the common and Latin names to prevent confusion. I know if you're in a different country than me, then you might call plants by a different name. So using the Latin is a really useful way to just keep us all on the same page. On this west fence over here to begin, where all of these shovels are just kind of leaned up against there, will be a pot containing a cucumber. Next to that is a grape, which you can see is just starting to get some leaves on. There used to actually be two grapes in this yard and they were kind of in the very middle and strung up over a tall trellis, which created an even worse shade issue in a place where there didn't need to be one. The roots underneath the two grape plants went all the way across the whole yard so it was pretty disruptive in that way. So I got this great big pot and buried it into the ground and lined it with some good landscape fabric. So hopefully that'll keep the roots contained. The grape did do okay last year, even though I had pruned it all the way back down to a stump. And so hopefully it'll be even better this year. Next to the grape in this little unusual dome, we have a tiny little rosemary. And he looks like he actually got a little bit hot today, but this Poor little guy. I grew from seed and it took many, many attempts to get any of my rosemary seeds to germinate. And so I've kind of had him in this little dome to keep him protected because I did notice that as soon as it was about an inch tall, something was chewing on it. So today I think it just got hot. So I'm gonna give it a drink of water and hopefully it'll be okay. Next to the rosemary is a catnip plant. I don't have any cats, but the bees sure like it. So I grow it. Because catnip's in the mint family and spreads easily, I like to keep this sort of plant in a pot so that it doesn't end up everywhere else. Behind the catnip is a honeysuckle. It's a white variety. I can't remember the name right now, but I'll pop it up on the screen. And next to that will be lavender, if I can get any to germinate. And if I can't, I'll just buy some or find a cutting somewhere. And this right here is a hydrangea. And it produces these huge balls of white, kind of pale pink flowers. And the bees really like those as well. I will be putting some kind of a trellis system or maybe some wires across this fence to help those plants grow upwards. In this first hooped bed on the west side of the garden, I'm going to be growing three different kinds of celery, assuming I can get them to sprout. Some greens. I have already planted three different kinds of arugula here at the front of the bed. And I'm going to try radishes. I had a really hard time with radishes last year and also with turnips. It seemed like the rooting vegetables didn't like the soil. I did a little research and found that that may have to do with excess nitrogen. I'm not sure what to do about that, but maybe since other things grew in here last year, they've depleted the nitrogen a bit. So I'm going to try radishes again because generally they are easy to grow and hopefully I'll have better success. 
in this second hooped bed, I'm going to grow mainly brassicas. I'm going to have a couple varieties of broccoli, some cabbage. I had some really beautiful cabbages last year. What I grow is the Copenhagen Market variety, and they turned out just wonderful and tasted so good. I'm also going to grow some kale, and I have already planted some mizuna down here at the end. And I did this just kind of as an experiment because I also planted mizuna in the seed starter trays. I just wanted to see how cold tolerant it was. And you can see a few little guys popping up there. They seem to be doing okay, growing slowly. I cover them with fleece every night so that they don't get eaten by visitors. These two beds in the sunny corner are going to be devoted to peppers. I'm going to grow 10 different kinds of peppers, two plants each. Again, assuming I can get them to germinate. I have sown 120 pepper seeds. Two have germinated and they both died. So I'm not sure what's going on there, but assuming I can find all the plants I want, these will be devoted to mainly Mexican peppers that I can use to make my own mole paste. This is a kind of a fun little uneven succulent pot that I built out of some of the scrap wood from my stackable planters. I put a few different succulents that I've had for a couple of years. They've kind of been moved around here and there, but I thought they might like this spot. In there I've got some Sempervivums, also known as hens and chicks, some red cobweb Sempervivums, a couple types of sedums, and in the back there, those are called ice plants, and they send up these beautiful hot pink flowers. They get pretty tall, so I'm excited for those to come out. What I've actually set this on top of is a some kind of a ceramic tile and underneath is another identical box that's actually holding a cord to the sump pump that comes out of the ground and runs up behind there and plugs into the wall and i just wanted a way that was kind of attractive to disguise it so i did this little pot idea around this spot since i don't tend to walk there it's kind of a narrow space i planted a bunch of flowers from what Burpee sent out last year called the Soa Smile Mix. It's a collection of mainly Cosmos. There's some baby's breath, corn flowers, that sort of thing. I collected a whole bunch of seeds from the pot that I had those in last year and just spread them around here, put a little compost on top. We'll see if they pop up. If not, no big deal. I just thought it might be a good way, way to beautify this area. On to my crowning achievement for the year, my stacked planters. These are mainly going to hold herbs, and they'll have some local wildflowers or really sun-loving annuals kind of interplanted in between them and underneath the boxes. Right now I have an, uh, a Veronica, Georgia Blue. It's still got a few flowers. They have these really nice bluish purple flowers. I'm not sure that will come through. You'll have to take my word for it. The green onions I planted in here are a mixture of a variety that I grew from seed last year called Tokyo Long and also from just trimmings from organic green onions that came from the grocery store. You can see those are popping up out of those little stubs. This is an oregano, and over here I have some chives. They seem to be doing okay. In this corner, I have another Triumph. This is a purple top verbena, and I tried so hard to get this to germinate last year and finally got one plant, and toward the end of the summer, it was large enough to plant out. Because moles do run along this wall here, I decided to plant this one in a buried terracotta pot just to protect the roots. And as you can see from the fact that it's now a few feet tall, it did very well there and it's sending up new shoots and I'm really happy about that. The bees really like this plant here. Over here is a geranium. It sends up these nice hot pink flowers as you can see on the tag there. And it's recovering nicely from winter. Over on this side of the garden on the east fence, I have my little bug hotel area. This top bug hotel I built at Talent Maker City again during a workshop for pollinators. And the bottom one was one that my mom gave me as a Christmas gift. Thank you, mom. I do have a little water dish down here for the bees and I wanna make a little stand that goes right here. And then I can just have water there near the bug hotel so they don't have to go too far for it. There's some more of that Veronica Georgia Blue. You can see the blue color on it a little better now. It's a really beautiful plant. In this pot will be my single tomato for the year, which will be a San Marzano. 
I'm growing it because of the low acidity and because it's a good sauce tomato. We also had so many tomatoes last year we kind of got sick of them and still have a lot left over in storage. So one tomato will be enough this year. Transitioning to the wildlife side of the garden now. In this pot I'm going to have tropical milkweed which has these beautiful yellow and red flowers. It is an annual so it doesn't last but I do have some in the greenhouse that are doing well and I'm really excited to plant those. In this little bare patch next to it is going to be the showy milkweed which is a perennial and it puts up big pink bunches of flowers and the local bees really love it and butterflies of course too. So I'm hoping that I can get them to take this year. The ones I had last year got really eaten up by aphids and just didn't make it so I'll have to be a little more vigilant about that this year. Some of our survivors from last year is this Gylardia. It's done really well and in fact is already putting on a flower there. It has these orange flowers that are really nice, kind of sunny, sunflowery looking. Back behind there, this is a little ornamental grass. I think it's called uh, dwarf mondo grass or Japanese mondo grass. It produces tiny little blue berries. I don't think they're edible for humans anyway, but they're really interesting to look at and they look really good up next to the rock barrier that I've built up there. Over here we have some salvia. I believe this variety is called Blue Victory, and it did pretty well last year. I do unfortunately have, I'm not sure it'll come through on the camera, but there is a kind of raised soil right here where a mole has come through. So that is does remain a problem, but I don't worry about it too much in the wildlife area because, you know, moles are wildlife too. I will be planting some other natives back in this, behind this rock barrier, like Calendula, Black-Eyed Susan, that sort of thing, Coreopsis, uh, hopefully some yarrow. I just have to either grow them myself or get a hold of them. This tree I have in the yard, I believe it is a weeping white birch. Really pretty, nice umbrella shape. Does need a little bit of shaping. It's just got these long flower strands on it that are just full of pollen right now. And I've been seeing some of the bees come and check them out, which is nice. It is hard to have a tree, even a small one like this, in a yard this size because it does block quite a bit of the sun, available sun. But if I keep it trimmed and shaped, we do pretty well and the birds love it, so I can't deny them that. Speaking of the birds, I have this bird bath that I bought a couple years ago. It has not endured the winters very well, and so I've had to place a planter saucer in it just to hold water, but that seems to be working okay. My bird feeder is actually just another planter saucer that is suspended from a hanging basket frame and the birds do like it. Most of the birds I get here from October to April are dark-eyed juncos. They just swarm the place. They did leave a few days ago, but they'll be back in October. I do also, during the winter, get a lot of chickadees, lesser goldfinch, yellow-crowned sparrow. They've all disappeared, but they're around. I can hear their bird song. Right now, I mostly have hanging out a solitary white crown sparrow and a scrub jay mother who comes and feeds her big baby who's perfectly capable of feeding himself. And there's a couple of house finches who have really pretty rosy red heads. In this corner, you can see where the bird seed chaff on the ground has kind of been pushed aside. That's where a mole has come up and disturbed the soil. But here's where I would like to plant Michaelmas daisy. It's a type of aster that's kind of this purplish silver color. Really beautiful. Blooms in the fall. The bees go crazy about it. And actually, I'd like to eventually get a beehive and put it right there, uh, but I have to make sure I have enough food for the bees to eat. So right now there aren't really enough plants to sustain a beehive, so that might be a goal for next year. Back here I have a nice bushy parsley plant that overwintered well and one little tiny cilantro that poked up through the soil a couple months ago. It's growing nicely. There are some other cilantro seeds planted around there so hopefully we'll get some more of that. Back behind the bird area I have this curious trash can with a ramp on it and what this is is a rat trap because rats are a problem. They live under my neighbor's deck and come through. You can see the previous resident and I have both tried to block them off but they dig in anyway. This is kind of an ingenious design. You put bait up this little ramp and on this little board and then when they step on it, it tips forward and into the water they go. We did catch one a couple days ago uh, or it had been in there probably for a couple of days. We're not sure. 
but uh, it was dead and it was huge so that was good back in this corner i will put another of my rectangular fence board planters but for right now this is where i have most of my hyacinth my hyacinth bucket if you will or bouquet if you want to keep up appearances there are some daffodils maybe some irises coming up in those two but they haven't flowered probably because this is back in the shade we are on the shade side of the lawn now this is the shade bed as i call it and these are all plants that will tolerate shade and are friendly to pollinators what i have right now is a viola which seems to have recovered from winter very nicely it's looking really good these tall plants next to it are valerian and they've done excellent this is feverfew and one of the YouTubers I follow, Homegrown Garden, mentioned that these can actually take over. And I planted five plants, I think, that I grew from seed last year, and they are, I mean, they're just enormous. They produce these really nice pale yellow flowers, and lots of them. Edging along this border is actually Sweet Alyssum. There are about five plants there, some larger than others. They seem to be doing okay, and I do see a few flowers coming in, which is a good sign. In this kind of blank line between the valerian feverfew and alyssum there was last year monarda and another variety of salvia i cut them back once they seemed like they were gone and dead they're supposed to be perennial but i don't see any signs of them coming up again this year so not sure why maybe they'll eventually spring up but for now it looks pretty empty i almost forgot to mention i would like to put a little micro pond in this bed similar to what homegrown garden has done she used an old sink and that seemed to work very well and it's great if you don't have a lot of space that would be really nice we do have a lot of pacific tree frogs around here and i love to see them so it'd be great to have some in my yard back in this kind of junk corner i will put another one of my rectangular stackable planters for this poor western sword fern that's trying so hard to hang on i have tripped over this pot twice and knocked it out of there it needs some water so we'll see if it survives i am trying to replenish the ground cover here i have some blue star creeper white alpine creeper and rupture wart planted in different areas so hopefully those will fill out this year that's all for now thank you for following let me know if you have any suggestions or questions and i'll see you next time